Hi, this is Jazz with JD Wax, and today we're going to learn how to do some scamo. We're going to learn how to first make the little pieces, like how they're linked into four, and then we're going to learn how to take those small pieces and either link them together, and we're also going to learn how to link them into like a bigger piece to like make a sleeve or something. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so today... I have got some scales and right now I've been working on my dress um, I don't know if you've seen it in previous videos but um, I'm making a chainmail dress and I'm going to show you how to make some pieces of it So, first you take your handy dandy gigantic pliers, and I have two different kinds, and I like to tape the ends of my pliers because I was never able to find a, um, find like a flat pliers that had no markings on the inside for chain mail. So what I do is... Um, I wrap wrap the ends so it doesn't mar the rings because that's the last thing you want to do is to put all of this work and all of this effort into something and then it looked like crap because you decided that you couldn't find any regular pliers and all the rings are scratched up so I wrap my pliers in uh, tape so that the, it doesn't mar up the, the rings. So first, they all come in a bag that looks, and they all look like this. They're like kind of like partially open, but not really. And that's from where they, um, where they had wire wrapped a spool. And then they took the, the coil off of the spool and either they sawed the rings or they had like a mechanically cut the rings somehow. They probably have like some industrial like scissors or something. Don't quote me on that because I don't know how they cut the rings in a shop. I use my own um, uh, bolt cutters to cut like the 14 gauge uh, stainless steel and the um, like 14 gauge galvanized steel, like the heavier gauges is what I use to cut with the um, bolt cutters with. And like what we'll do, we, we do do our own rings every once in a while. We haven't done any lately because we have two kids and it's extremely hard to do anything with them, like, at least productive, even, like, cleaning and stuff. I don't know if any of you have kids, but it can get a, a really big hassle. And, like, I love them to death and everything. It's just I have to work around them. And working around them can sometimes be a pain. So, like, right now it's, like, 3 in the morning. And so, pardon me if I'm a little tired, or like if my speech is a little slurred or something, because uh, I'm really tired. So, what we're going to do is, the rings are like partially open, so we're just going to take it with both of our pliers, and we're just going to open it, and you're going to follow how it's already opened. So see how this one's on the top and this one's on the bottom? You're just going to continue making this one on the top and this one on the bottom. And you're just going to continue to open the ring. And that's what you're going to do with all your rings before you get started. Because it, it's just easier to um, open your rings before you get started and before you start putting everything together. Because then it just takes a long time. And normally what my husband does is he'll open the rings for me. So that I just don't have to do it, period. 
And I know that's kind of cheating, but it gets stuff done. And he knows that it makes my life a lot easier if my rings are already open. That should be enough to start with so now what you're going to do now the pattern that I have been doing I haven't really been doing a pattern at all it's just whichever one this is what it's supposed to look like when um, it's pretty much finished so there is no like rhyme or reason to any of these scales. It's just whatever I threw together. And that's how I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be like a little bit of chaos in there. Um, because there is no rhyme or reason to any of these scale patterns. I don't have a pattern to it. I just wanted them to be like all mixed together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take two scales and the thing is since I don't want it to be any like rhyme or reason as to like what's going on with my scales what I do is I just make sure that there's no more than three colors in a in a batch of four and you'll see what I mean a batch of four here in a minute so I'm going to take this bronze scale and this royal blue scale and then two of these black scales. So now there's no more than three colors, no more than three colors in a, um, in a scale pile in a batch. So now what I'm going to do. is I'm going to take take two of my scales and I'm going to take an open ring. I'm going to put them where the I don't know if you can see that, but there's a um a mark where the scale is bent like upwards and it's like that on every scale. So I'm going to put the one, the parts that are up, I'm going to put them back to back. I say those are the backs, these are the fronts. So I'm going to put those back to back. And the back is where the, um, where the scale is bent and it comes up into the point. And then I'm going to take these. And I'm going to try and line it up as best I can. I'm just going to close the ring. See? And then, whichever one I want on top. So, I'm going to take this one because I wanted the blue one on top. I'm going to take the other black scale. And, again, I'm going to make sure that the point is on top. And I'm going to put it, put them back to back again. So both the points should be touching. Both the points should be touching. Then I'm going to loop this through. And I'm going to close the ring. And again, I'm just taking these and I'm going the opposite direction of when I, what I was doing before to make them closed. And you want to get it as close as possible because if they're even a little bit open, they will... They will, like, come apart. Well, these ones won't, but I know if you're using, like, the 316th rings, um, they, they'll, they will come apart. So then you need to lay it flat, and it should lay something like this, where all the fronts are facing up. And then I'm going to take my bronze scale, and I'm just going to lay it down on top. 
and I'm going to take uh, an open ring. Now I'm going to go through, I'm pushing it through the top one, So and then it'll come out the back. Okay, so did you see how I did that? I pushed it through the top, and it came out the back. Now you're going to hold it up, and you're going to place the scale right on top of it. And then close it. So it should look something like this. Just like that. Then you're going to take another ring and you're going to push it through the bottom one, push it all the way from front to back. And then you're going to place, pick up the other scale and place it on the ring. And then you're just going to close. And you want to make sure it's flush and it's closed all the way. These are 16 gauge 5 16 rings. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. But they're 14 gauge 5 16 And the thing is, I'm using these to make my dress. So it should look something like this. So yes, it is going to be worn. And yes, it is going to be like an armor, so I don't want this to come apart. I'm putting all this work and all this energy in this. I don't want this to come apart at all. And that's why I'm using the 14 gauge, because um, they're more heavy duty than like the 316 that they tell you to use, or like the the 316 like um 20 gauge wire. I wanted like a heavy duty wire because I wanted this dress to last a lifetime. And if anything goes wrong with this dress, I'm going, I, I can just fix it instead of like taking the whole thing apart and redoing it because I don't want to have to redo something that I already did. I want to do it right the first time. That's just how I am. I would rather go out of my way the first time to get it done right than to half-ass it and just breeze through it and then it fall apart on me later because I've I've done that and it just sucks it sucks having to redo something over and over and over again I absolutely cannot stand it and like even my husband will tell you that I cannot stand to do stuff twice but this is what this is supposed to look like. I just turned it around for you. Oh, out of focus. There we go. All right. So then I have this piece. So that's what it looks like when you finish a batch of four. And normally I just go through and I just make a whole bunch of these and like I'll use like I just make all sorts of different patterns with these so like I can do three bronze and like one black or three bronze and one blue or like two bronze two blue So like there's that and then you're gonna put this up against the back put the backs together show you one more time how I do how I'm doing this put the backs together push the, the ring through close the ring And I think I'm going to do another blue. Now, you can do your scales however you want. You can make whatever pattern you want. I 
want mine to just like meld together almost. I want, I, I don't want there to be any rhyme or reason to the way I'm doing my, my dress. I want it to look as natural as possible. At least what I consider natural. Because, like, I'm sure that out in the wild, like, some iguanas have, like, a stripe on their butt and some iguanas don't. And, like, some iguanas have green and yellow. And some iguanas might have, like, green and dark green. You know? Like, I want mine to be unique and I want mine to be... As natural looking as ever. Like some iguanas might have four scales that are all dark green. Or four scales that are all light green. Or, you know, some that are like dark green and some that are light green in the same scale. Or dark green, light green, dark green, light green. Let's do a scale like that. So like blue and black. Put them back to back. Put the ring through it. So now on this one, I'll use a black scale. Put the put them back to back. I'll put the ring through it. And so since there's two black and two and uh, one blue, I'm going to use a blue for the next one. Push this through the top, make it go straight through, and then hold it up, place the other scale on top of it. Now you're going to do the same thing, take an open ring, push it through the top scale, and then place the other scale over top of it. Make sure you don't get your, your rings caught together, because then it just makes it really weird and really hard, and it looks like it's messed up. And you should be able to tell, like, right away... What happened? All right. So, yeah. And I just make all sorts of different combinations until I'm, uh, I'm done. And I have a whole big bunch of them. Right. And yes, my table is not wood, it's like a plastic. So I'm sorry about the noise. Alright, and so how you attach it to like a bigger part of the like a bigger portion of scales. So what I like to do since I don't like any of them to be like touching is let's see. I'll put this one right here because there's too many um, bronze scales right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do what I just did. I'm going to take the ring and I'm going to push it through the top scale. And you got to make sure that nothing gets tangled. It's going to come, come out the back and then you're going to place the top scale, this top scale, over the ring. And then close it. Okay. And then 
then you can tuck that scale back behind there because that one is before these ones. So it, you always have to make sure that these top scales are behind the next row of scales because it it'll it won't fit together and it'll be really hard to um to to get the scales to fit together how they're supposed to and lay how they're supposed to if they're all like wonky and then so what I like to do is I'm going to put the scale through this one and then I'm going to place this scale on top of the ring if it'll go through it might not go through all right so I'm gonna take that out that didn't work so I'm gonna turn it over just a little bit I'm going to pick up this scale and I'm going to make my ring go through it. Oh my gosh. Now my ring's going to take them and all my other, other rings and scales. So I'm going to push this through so that when it comes out the back, I can, and you have to make sure they all lay correctly because see, this blue scale was getting in the way so you have to push it down to make it lay down. And then just place the, the blue scale over top of the ring and close it. All right, and see how this, this is like on top like that? You have to pick up the scales that you're working on and place them in front of that scale Otherwise, it's just going to look wonky. You don't want your scales to look wonky. Because these scales come before these ones. So they have to be back in their place before you can move on. Because see, if the scale is like up here and you're trying and you're like trying to lift it up to like get the ring in between, in between this scale here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to leave it there. I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So like, it's going to be really difficult to get those scales to connect together. First off. All right. So there, that scale's on top. First off, that doesn't look right because it's not going in the same way as your other scales on this side. Now on this side, that's what it looks like. It looks like there's a scale missing. And you don't want that. You want them to lay flat like all your other scales. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out because it, it's bothering me. Like it's really bothering me. And then I'm just going to push it down to where it falls back. And I'm going to link the same two scales together that I just linked together. Alright. And then if you saw, here's the four that we started with. There, if... If there's two scales beside each other and then they have two hanging off of them, that's the best place for these because they fit so nicely. Because you need one up here to connect those two together. And then you need one right here, one right here, and then you need one in the middle to connect these two together. And that's why I make them into fours and then I attach them to other to the other scales. And then you're just going to 
go through and place the, bo the bottom one up. Oh, see, and this one is wanting to come through again. There we go. I had to put that top blue one on top of that orange one, the bronze one. See, because this one was trying to come through again, so you had to put this one back on top of this one to make it lay down. And there you go. So you have one attached to the middle one. Now, what happens if you have an even bigger piece and you're trying to connect those together? Well, let me show you. Because this piece is is going to be the um it, it's going to basically lay lay across my arm like that and it's going to hang down it's going to be the sleeve i'm going to have like bat sleeves so it, it stops at like my elbow the the piece does and this piece is going to go like down like this. And this is going to be like my bat wing. If that makes any sense. Might not even be able to see that. But anyway. So this piece is going to be around my, my arm right here. And then it's just going to go out like that. And it's going to come down in like a bat wing. So it's going to have really long sleeves, y'all. Alright. Now you see how I left this as a point? It makes it a lot easier when you do that to um, attach it to where it needs to go. So like this piece right here, there's a lot of them and they're going kind of like in a diagonal. So and then there's two right here. There's two right here that need one to hang down to make it even. So that's why I left this point on there, is so that I can attach it, and then right here, I can attach this one to that one, and I can attach this one to that one. And then this one to that one, this one to that one, this one to that one, and this one to that one. So it kind of fits nice, nicely right there. And that's what we're going to do now. Now I'm not going to go ahead and... Uh, well, I might. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole thing. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do the whole thing. So open up some more rings. And these are the last of my 5 16 rings, so I do have to order more. And I absolutely hate ordering stuff. I just, I can't, I'm impatient. I don't like to wait for stuff to come. I like to just go to the store, get what I need, and then get out. That's the kind of person I am. Because I know that if I stay, then I'm going to spend thousands of dollars on stuff that I either don't need or just like fun stuff that I think my daughter would like. Like I got, I went to Hobby Lobby the other day just so that I could get wire. And then on my way out of the store, they had diamond arts and like the checkout counter like part, like right before you get into the checkout counter because they have like these little stands that are just like sitting there. 
and they had a Frozen 2 one, and they had a, um, they had a Frozen 2 one and a Cinderella one. Cinderella is my daughter's absolute favorite princess of all time. And, um, she also likes the Anna Elsa Frozen 2. Well, she liked Frozen first off. And then now she likes the Frozen 2 even more than the first Frozen. So, when I saw those, I had to get them. And when I saw those... I was like, well, what other ones do they have? Because I don't want to just get these ones just because they're right here. So I had to go back and look at the diamond arts just to make sure that there weren't any better ones that she would like. Now, my daughter is six, y'all. And she can do, like, the the small little ones. Like, the small little um, diamond arts that are, like, this big. She can do those by herself. But, um, these ones were, like, a lot bigger than what she would normally do. Well, she picked up diamond art from my husband's mom. So, it's her Meemaw, is what she calls her. And, uh, her Meemaw will let her sit there and do big ones with her. She absolutely adores the diamond arts. So... When I saw those, I had to get them. And I went back to where they had all the diamond arts. I spent probably like $200 on diamond arts that day. I, I was a happy camper with what I bought, but at the same time, I was not happy that I spent that much at Hobby Lobby. So... And neither was my husband. <laughs> my husband can't stand it when I spend like two, three, four hundred dollars at Hobby Lobby on stuff like that that I'm not even going to do. And that might not get done, period. So it's going to sit in our house for like ever before it gets done or before I give it to my, uh, my mother-in-law to do. So he was in a happy camper, and I just wasn't happy that I spent that much at Hobby Lobby. But hey, what do you do? That's why I have a job. I have a job so I can get the stuff that I need and then the stuff that I want. And like the way we are, we are not hurting for money. So I don't mind spending like two, three, four hundred dollars at Hobby Lobby. Now, if we were hurting for money like we were like last year and the year before, I'm not going to be spending that much on, on stupid stuff. Well, what I consider stupid stuff. Um, like that. Like, I don't consider this chain mail to be stupid. I don't consider... My wire wrapping to be stupid. I just, I'm not going to spend it on like diamond arts or anything like that. Just, you know, stupid stuff. Now, what I'm doing here is I finished attaching these. So now what I'm doing is I am filling in this... Filling in this gap that I have. See, now this ring doesn't want to close. So, 
what I do here when they don't want to close is I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna turn it around so that it's open on this side. And then I can like bend the scales out of the way to get a better grip on this. And then close the ring. That's not closed. And what I do is I'm, I bent it up and then when I bent it back down to come back, I pushed it together like that to make it close. All right, so there's that one. And the reason I chose, like, this is why I um, make them in fours like this, is so that if I have a space like this, because it, it came down like this, I can take this scale and put it in between these two scales to make it that four that I need. So then I need... I'm going to push this through. And I'm going to link it into this one. I'm going to have to turn it around again, y'all. These scales just don't want to cooperate today. There's that, and then it looks like I can attach this blue scale to this blue scale. So this one and this one. So I'm going to take another ring. Push it through this top one. And then pick this, push that black scale down so it doesn't come out. And then pick up the blue scale and close. All right. Now this bronze scale, it can attach this black scale to kind of finish that off a little bit. And sorry about the other side, you guys. I um, didn't realize I was no longer filming. My phone just turned it off. I don't consider any of that, um, any of the stuff, uh, like, frivolous or anything, but, um, because I can actually, like, make stuff out of this, it occupies my time, and then I can also sell it if I want to. So, I don't see any of this as, like, a waste of money or anything. But, uh, my camera shut off so I went ahead and finished this the same way that I showed you so then now what what I start doing after this is I'll just go ahead and start making some more of the little little small pieces of the four and I normally just start attaching them around here or like I make a bigger piece and then attach it just like how I had done this one. 
Now every once in a while you'll get a piece like this. And I think I'm going to use black for this one. There's not enough black over here. Now what happens is that there's no room for the um, for the four piece. So I'm just going to attach the one. And you always got to make sure that your your bottom scales are on top. Make sure they don't get tucked around the back of any of them. Because then it'll mess everything up. Especially if you go to put another scale in, there, then you'll have like a big gap in your scales. But see how that one, it, it tucked itself under. You're just going to pull it out, make it lay on top, pull that one out, make it lay on top. Uh. Now see these ones are, are really close together. And if you push them together just right, it does look like they're going to fit in this, like, s sequence of four right here. So I'm just going to attach them together to keep them in place so one doesn't go behind any of the others. See, and I have, like, a nice little, little area right here where you can attach a four. See? Right here. And you'll just keep building on that and building on that until you get all the way to the length that you need. And I think that my arm is like... I'll get a measuring tape just so I know. Alright. So I want it to be at least to my wrist right here. And with this measuring tape, with this measuring tape, my daughter cut off the first two inches with a pair of scissors. So, um, we start at three. So we're going to start at three. That's our starting point. So my arm according to this is 13 inches so we're gonna minus three inches off of that so my arm is actually gonna be 10 so I need 10 inches from the top of this to the bottom which it looks like I just need one more inch it looks like So one more inch. I just need like one more pair of four hanging down off of this. And that'll be the length that I need for for my arm right here for the sleeve. So I'm happy about that. Alright, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and, and make it the, the length that I need in this video. That way it's all done, said and done. Don't have to worry about it anymore. And I can just fill it in however I need. Because I do want a bat wing on here. I do want a bat wing. So what I started doing on this side is 
I started going in a diagonal. And so I'm going to make this, this middle part, the length that I need it. So like one more four, like going straight down. And then I'm going to build on the side of this until it gets gets all the way down to the, the spot that I need it. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And then, so when I close them, like when I put both, both of these ends together, it'll make like a, a bat wing um, sleeve for my chainmail dress. Sorry about all that noise. I, I wasn't even thinking, I was just trying to explain and show you. I got excited. I always get excited when I talk about my dress. I've been working on this thing for three years and it's just now finally coming together. And you have no idea how stoked I am. I was hoping to have it done by Halloween this year, but I don't think that's going to happen. I was hoping to have it done by the Renaissance this year, but it doesn't look like we're going to be having the Renaissance Fair either, due to COVID. So... That's always the thing. So this one I'm going to put right here. All right, so there's that piece right there, and I'm going to attach another piece right here to make it hang down just a little bit more so that it covers my wrist.
And now remember, I don't want any more than, th than three of the same color in a pattern at one time, in one grouping. Oh no, I just put that on backwards. Well, and it's just a simple fix. You just make sure that you put it down right on top of the other scale over top of the, the ring. close it. I'm doing mostly bronze because I'm running out of the other colors. And I will have to order some more scales, I believe. don't like doing that because online shopping is worse than in-store shopping. Yeah, the in-store you can just like willy-nilly go through the store and you know put stuff in your cart or whatever. But when you do it in-store you can actually see everything that you're putting in your cart online you you don't really see that you can just to me I just see the price like yeah you can see what you're putting in your cart obviously but I don't look at what's in my cart I I just look at the the price and I'm like oh I can afford that I can afford that blah 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 and I just keep adding stuff to my cart and adding stuff to my cart next thing you know it's like five hundred dollars and then I'm too lazy to actually go through and pick out everything that I actually want. Partially because I'm, I'm, I'm just lazy. And partially because I feel like everything that I got in my cart, I need for some sort of project. So I feel like everything that's in my cart I need. So I obviously need to spend the $500. That's just my logical thinking. It's not very logical, but that's my thinking behind it. And again, I I have money to spend. So it's not it's not going to hurt me if I spend the $500 or whatever. Because I first pay all my bills, no matter what, hands down, all my bills are, are paid before I do any other spending whatsoever. And if I don't have a lot of money to spend, because like last year we were on a really tight budget, and that's part of the reason why I didn't get a lot of stuff for my dress done last year was because we were on a tight budget last year and the year before so I didn't spend hardly any money whatsoever except for like bills food and like maybe clothes if we absolutely needed them and my daughter couldn't wear hand-me-downs So don't think that I'm like just some willy-nilly spender who just like, oh, I have no self-control, blah, 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 blah. I have self-control. I just, I don't see a point in worrying about it right now because 
we're not in any sort of trouble. All of our bills are paid. We're all caught up on everything. Like, it, it's not going to bother us if we spend like two, three hundred dollars on something. So, yeah. At least that's how I feel about it. My husband feels the same way. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. If he felt differently as well, I wouldn't do it. Hands down. Like, marriage is a partnership. It's not just me and it's not just him. We have to sit down and talk everything through. And say, if he says, please don't buy that we really need the money right now for whatever else, then I'm obviously not going to buy whatever he's asking me not to buy. Because I would want the same respect as, as him. If I was to tell him, please don't buy that, I would want that respect. I don't want him to go behind my back and buy it anyways and then us be in trouble later on down the road. So if I ask him, please don't, please don't buy that, and this is why, he's not going to buy it either. And if he asks me, Jazz, please don't buy that, then I'm obviously not going to buy it because we have this mutual respect for each other and we don't want to be in trouble financially. So, alright, so this is the length that I want it. I'm going to go ahead and measure it again just to be sure, just in case. Oh crap, now it's too long. Yeah, it's, it's too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these three right here. I'm just going to have these up here. So, man, I wish I did that before. See, now I just created more work for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off. does happen sometimes so don't be alarmed when it does all right and there's the last one all right I'm gonna go ahead and measure this again Measure this one more time just to make sure. There we go. Now that's the length that I need. So now with all the rest of the scales and stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in here. Because now I know that this is the bottom, this is the length that I need. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in everything else. And just make it a bat wing. And then, yeah. And that's how I do scale mail. And I've done chain mail for 
at least uh, eight years, eight years now. Because I did it before me and my husband were together. So, me and have been together six years now. So, I would say it's probably been about eight years when I started doing chain mail. Yeah. My, my, it looks so good. All right. And I will, I will post a video later on um, about my whole dress after it's completely finished. So don't worry about missing out on anything because I will get to it. All right. And here, I'll go ahead and show you the, the other side. Zoom out a little bit. See how beautiful that looks? Now, mind you, it might look like a loincloth right now, but it's not going to look like it for very much longer. I like how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am, <laughs> I cannot wait for this to, uh, to be done. Let me tell you. See? There we go. That's what it's going to look like. Because I do want a little bit left because I'm going to be wearing my dragon eye bracelet as well. So I don't want it to completely cover my wrist, but I do want it to come down to the bracelet. So it'll be look kind of like that. All right. Shimmer man, that always gets me.